Hey there, my name is Daniel and here are eight tips that I learned as I got my engineering degree. Now these tips can be applied to other majors besides engineering, but being that I graduated with an engineering degree, I'm going to mostly apply them to an engineering perspective. Before I start, I just want to make it clear that I'm not a trained life coach. Uh, these are just eight tips that I think will be helpful to you or to hopefully someone else that you know uh, as you go through your, your college education. The first thing is making friends. Making friends, I know it seems very obvious, but engineering especially is a collaborative effort and it's a lot of teamwork and making friends is going to teach you not only about how you work with a team, but it's going to teach you about yourself, what your strengths and what your weaknesses are and how you can overcome them and work with other people. The second thing that's really important is don't be afraid to ask. If you're sitting in a lecture hall, big or small, and the teacher says, hey, any, any questions, a lot of times students are intimidated by either the teacher or the subject, and they won't raise their hand and say, hey, I don't know, I don't know it. Chances are if you raise your hand and you say, hey, I don't know it, there's a good chance that someone else in the classroom also doesn't know the answer or also doesn't understand the topic. So don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask. That also goes for if you're working in the lab, if you're working on a project and you don't know how to use a specific program so well, or if you just have a question in your homework or you're studying for a test and there are seniors there, don't be afraid to go over and ask and say, hey, you know, do you have a second uh, and help me with this problem or point me in the right direction. Most of the time, seniors, older students, I know when I was an older student, I was definitely willing to help. I think most people are willing to help and just pitch in, especially if they can and it won't take them very long. The third thing is interning. Interning helps you know what you enjoy doing and also, very importantly, what you don't enjoy doing. Do you like working at a big firm, a small firm, large corporate structures or small corporate structures? You get to learn a lot about yourself, how you work with other people by through interning. Additionally, interning can lead to a job. A lot of times, either the company you work for or the company or your boss or your coworkers know someone who is looking to hire and that could lead to a hire. This doesn't necessarily mean the company that you work for is going to give you an offer, but this does this can lead to a very good chance that you will get an offer elsewhere through that internship. Additionally, if you're interning and you're later on in your career, later on in your college, you can always say, hey, I like this topic. I like learning about structures. I like learning about you know, geotechnical, whatever it is within your field. You can now narrow down to a more specific thing that you enjoy doing and take classes for that. As a senior, a lot of seniors tend to slack off and not take the big class and just take fluff courses. It's, I highly advise you taking courses that you find interesting and you apply and interning is a great way to know what you enjoy and what you actually find interesting. The fourth thing, and this is very engineering related, is learn your calculator. This obviously can apply to other fields by saying just learn your reference materials, but in engineering, specifically civil engineering, you, use, you do a lot of calculations. So it's very important to learn either learn how to be proficient in Excel, or it's been very important in school especially, learn how to use your calculator. Your calculator can be your biggest buddy when it comes to a test. If you sit there and you know how to just turn through numbers and you just know where every, all the cockies are, it can save you a lot of time. A lot of time. I know a professor told me when I was a freshman, use the same calculator for all your classes and that really helped me because going through physics all the way to math and my engineering courses, I used my calculator and it just helped me because I was able to know where everything was on that calculator. So learner calculator is very important. Number five, I would say is take your FE when you're still in school. Now, for those who don't know, the FE is the Fundamental of Engineering exam. It's an exam that tests you on all your undergraduate information uh, that you've learned the past four or five years, however long it took you. Uh, this test is very difficult to pass after you work in the field for a while, and then you have to go back and relearn all the other undergraduate information. If you take it right while you're still in school or right when you leave school it, and you take it right away, it helps raise your chances of passing by a lot. And this goes for other, other uh, majors as well. If you're going for anything and there's something that tests you on your fundamentals or your things you should learn in undergraduate, try to take it when you're still in school or you just graduated so everything's really fresh in your mind so you don't have to cram and study and try to remember things from a few years back. Number six is ask your professors for help outside of their specific classes. If you have a problem with a project and that professor teaches some sort of that portion of that project, it's not a problem to go over to them and say, hey, you know, uh, here's a problem, can you help me? And if they can, great. If they can't, they'll at least point you in the right direction. 
Another thing that professors are very helpful for is professors can help you connect you to other alumni who either are looking to hire or know people who are looking to hire. If you go over to a professor and say, here's my resume, email them your resume and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in looking for a job. They now know that if a job comes their way and they think you're a good candidate, they'll forward it to you. So I think going to professors for those office hours that a lot of people overlook is a very helpful asset that people don't, don't always see. Number seven is when you're applying, apply for internships and jobs, even if you don't 100% qualify for the job. If you're around 80% qualified, give or take, I would say apply for the job. And worst case scenario is they say no. And if, when you get that interview for that job and they say, hey, by the way, do you know how to do a certain skill? You can always just say, hey, listen, you know, I don't know how to do that, but I'm definitely willing to learn. And a lot of times companies will respect that for your honesty, your integrity, and just your willingness to put yourself out there and learn. So as long as you fulfill like 80% of the requirements, the school, the work knows that you don't know everything. You can't have two years experience as an entry level position. It's not possible. A lot of times your schoolwork will apply to those two years. So apply to jobs even if you're not 100% qualified. Number eight is LinkedIn. Now I know LinkedIn is a big topic and leave, let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video specifically on LinkedIn. But for now, LinkedIn can be used to connect with alumni, coworkers, your professors, and specifically your adjunct professors who actually work in the field. And you could just engage in conversations with people you met once or twice and just ask them about, you know, what's their story? How did they come to the decisions that they made? Why did they go for a master's? Why didn't they go for a master's? Uh, is licensing. You can ask any questions through LinkedIn. And I think LinkedIn is also very important when you're looking for a job or internship. It's a quick, easy way for people to look you up and see your resume. And all the resumes are in the same order and they all look the same. So it's very good to have a clean, nice LinkedIn profile. So I think that wraps up the eight things that I learned as I got went through my engineering degree. So let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions, if you have any other ideas for future videos, if you like this format or any other things that you like to just talk about, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to make more videos on things that I think are relevant. Um, please share, like, share, subscribe, uh, share it to people who you think might uh, enjoy these videos or might find it helpful. And thanks for watching. See you next time.